Well, another new issue of the man, its splashy debut last month was Excite. The company specializes in media navigation, developing search engines, products that help search and browse data on the Internet. And since its 2 million share offering at $17, its stock is traded in a relatively narrow range. Currently priced at 19 and a quarter shares. Hasn't been all roses, though. For a while there, it dropped down to below the IPO price. Joining us now from Midtown Manhattan is George Bell. He's CEO of Excite. Good morning, sir, and welcome. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, your, your background, I, I was reading your background, and it is primarily in... Um, publishing, media, things of that nature, writing, producing in the media. Uh, is, is that your vision for Excite, too? Because the public perception is it's just a search engine. Well, we obviously have strong underlying technology. That's the core of our company. But our business model is very much like a publishing model. Uh, we aggregate certain kinds of viewers to our services, mm -hmm. and we sell advertising against that demographic base. So we're very much driven by a business model which approximates that of a magazine or even a cable network. How much of your advertising comes from other net sites? Uh, probably 90% of our advertising comes from core technology advertisers who have sites up themselves, and probably 10% comes from advertisers that are, lie outside those boundaries. All right, that's, uh, see, Steve at uh, uh, Columbia University uh, sa is concerned that, that what you're doing here is you've got a circular revenue stream, you've got the same money just running around in a giant circle between all of you people on the, on the Internet, that there's no m new money being brought into the stream. I would suggest to Steve that he go look at cable 17 or 18 years ago when you had the automotive advertisers looking for one kind of demographic, which were men who were looking for one kind of content, which was sports. And at the time, investors worried whether cable could ever be anything bigger than just a niche network operation. Clearly, it grew to be quite a lot bigger than that. And I think clearly you see evidence right now that more than the technology advertisers are starting to come onto our services. L.L. Bean is an advertiser of Excite. Uh, Honda is an advertiser on Excite, Saturn is an advertiser on Excite. So you're starting to see a broadening of the advertiser base as the demographics broaden as well. Uh, but your premier advertiser, I take it, is just this Amazon.com, right? Uh, no. Our They're on the front page. Our, when our, I went to your site, Amazon.com was the ad I saw. Not any of the big names like Saturn or Sun. Right. And uh, by premier advertiser, I thought you meant the biggest dollar spender. Amazon is not a big dollar spender, but that's by way of volume. Really? Why are they on the front page then? Uh, because we we'd rotate all banners through general rotation, oh, and also advertisers can attach their names to keywords. We publish many, many thousands of pages a day by way of search results. So depending on the kind of search you've entered in, a banner might come up with a certain search results page that doesn't indicate that it's got placement in a sense like a cover or a table of contents on a magazine. It's not yes. organized in that fashion. Mm -hmm. Mr. Gary. Mr. Bell, there was some concern after the IPO that you sold some stock to Tribune at a below the IPO price. Uh, when we looked at that chart, that's why the stock had gone down. Can you explain to us why you did that and why, if I bought stock on the IPO, I shouldn't be uh, concerned about that? Right. First of all, I don't think it's why the stock went down, although it, uh, it is somewhat of a mystery. The answer to your question about the Tribune specifically is Tribune purchased on the investing round, the strategic round, prior to our IPO. And Tribune also bought stock on the IPO, as did AOL and CUC, also strategic partners that also participated at the IPO. So, in fact, that was misreported, um, and if it took a bump on the stock, it was because of inaccuracy in reporting. <laughs> Tribune is a holder and a long-term investor. In fact, we just announced a deal with Tribune last week to syndicate all of our journalistic web reviews of Excite through the 250 newspapers of the Tribune syndication services. Ever hear of Internet Fast Forward? Uh, no. All right, Internet Fast Forward is a... Uh, Netscape plugin, which I downloaded over the weekend to test to make sure that it worked, and it does. And what it does is it filters out Internet ads. That's uh, quite a threat to your revenue stream, isn't it? Uh, potentially. Um, don't forget here that we're talking about far less than 1% of total advertising spending in this country being spent on the net. If it grew to even 1%, you'd have a very successful set of businesses, including Excite. Now, I understand also, that, but my point is I have now have a Netscape browser which blocks all advertisements from my view. And, if that, and, and it would seem to me that is a threat to you because, you know, you, when you go to the sponsors and say, buy ads, they're going to say, why? Half the people out there are cruising with this thing that doesn't let them see the ads. It, it, it is potentially a threat. It's also easy to confuse your own preferences with market preferences. I mean, there are people, in fact, in the special interest areas that consider advertising part of content. For instance, if you're a skier, you might be as interested to hear that Rosignol has a deal on skis as you are to read the review about those skis. So mm -hmm. when you get into special interest publishing, as you know from other models, 
content is really a mix of both advertising and editorial, and levels of consumer interest can be very great for both. Mm -hmm. um, but why would anyone, though, bother uh, to go to your site? Uh, in, in this sense, I, I don't mean to be condescending or anything, George, uh, Mr. Bell. Uh, what we have here is we've got, for example, Deck putting up an absolutely free, absolutely uh, advertising uh, free site uh, called Alta Vista, which is getting millions of hits a day. Uh, this would seem to, you know, you set up shop and you're charging a price and the guy next door is giving it away for free. It just doesn't seem like the kind of atmosphere where you're going to have really strong revenue growth. Well, you've got every search company in this space, with the exception of Alta Vista, operating on a business model driven by advertising. And the issue is whether the placement of advertising slows down performance or affects results. And the answer on Excite is that it does not affect results and it does not slow down performance. No, so I don't think that's the question. I think the question is, <laughs> how much can you get for your, for your ads when somebody next door is giving it away with no ads in the way? Well, the answer is right now that we're getting a premium to most newspapers in this country. We're getting a premium to most magazines in this country. We're getting a premium to most broadcast models in this country right now. In fact, our CPMs are moving higher on a month-by-month -month basis. And I would expect by the end of this year, we're looking at a blended CPM of about $22 to $23. Mr. Bell, we're going to have to leave it at that point. Thank you very much. Thank you. George Bell, CEO of Excite, joined us live from Manhattan. We'll be right back.